Hi, it's Rob. Is this crazy bear? And today we're uh, gonna hike the Petrocliff National Monument outside of Albuquerque. Yeah, this is a uh, Rinconada Canyon. Uh, there's uh, hundreds, if not thousands, of petroglyphs out there. We can't get in to show you each one, but we'll give you a good view of what we see. Well, hope you enjoy the hike. We'll uh, touch back with you. Happy adventures. Real quick, before I get, let you go on with the video, um, I just wanted to really quickly just explain something. Crazy Bear has devoted his life to petroglyphs. He studies them, he has countless books, many of, of days, hours, months, weeks, and years out in the field studying all this. Why am I bringing it up? Is because this is a conversation, this video you're gonna watch is a conversation that Crazy Bear and I had while we were visiting an area that is near and dear to his heart. He spent a lifetime understanding this art and creating things using the influence of that art, including this piece of rock. This is an etched piece of rock and this is some of the artwork that Crazy Bear does. He also does photography, digital art, but he's a man who um, is influenced by his imagination. So, if you are interested in finding out more about his work, uh, please look in the description below and I'll have his link. Um, other than that, let's get back on the video. Hope you enjoy. The Petroglyph National Monument protects one of the largest petroglyph sites in North America. Featuring designs and symbols carved into volcanic rocks by Native Americans and Spanish settlers 400 to 700 years ago. These images are a valuable record of cultural expression and hold profound spiritual significance for contemporary Native Americans and for the descendants of the early Spanish settlers. Ready? I'm ready. <laughs> most famous petroglyphs in this area is a macaw and uh, it's a real clever petroglyph brilliant artistry nothing elaborate it's just a petro uh, petroglyph but uh, something to see yeah this is a, a record of uh, exotic birds traveling from South America all the way up through the North American continent. Lava is perfect for petroglyphs. Yeah, the patina is a dark brown to uh, almost black. And when you scrape it or chip it, it leaves an image that allows real detailed images. And this area represents, I believe it to be a record place, meeting place. And the records are indicating the people they're meeting. Because if you go through the northern territories from here you head northwest to the uh, Rio Puerto and the Rio Puerto works all the way up to Chaco Canyon that was the course and so, then from here all along the Rio Grande all the Pueblos we have 19 Pueblos now okay but in those days there was hundreds of Pueblos all along the Rio Grande so this area right in here is a crossroads okay and uh, a lot of the uh, uh, traders would go 
west and north, Chaco Canyon, Mesa Verde, and uh, the others would go along the Rio Grande to all the Pueblos, all the way to Colorado. Wow. So the one, one thing that not everybody may know is you kind of specialize in petroglyphs, right? Like you, yeah. you, you have a whole art form that revolves around the use of petroglyphs. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Uh, my creation is sharing the creativity and the ingenious art of rock art. That's what I'm all about. I, I'm not taking credit for any of the petroglyphs that I have. I'm just sharing the creativity of the original art. And I get into the mythology, the, the uh, uh, what was happening in the culture at the time, because it's like a newspaper. Mm -hmm. It's just like a, a news media. It tells you what's happening. You can see war, you can see famine, you can see family, you can see pets, you can see the death of pets. Um, it's endless what they create and a lot of the creation that they're, they're, they're doing is ingenious and that's what I'm following. I, I have a few petroglyphs that I created on my own as if I lived during that time. Mm -hmm. But I give that credit. They're no, they don't live anywhere other than on, on my Talking Canyons. Talking Canyons is my studio, is my computer. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. <laughs> well, let's keep going and okay. see if we can find some. Starting here in this area, uh, they've got it set up where you can't get down in there and crawl around the rocks. It looks like they're shutting that down. So the only real reason or the only real way that you'd be able to appreciate petroglyphs by this is a good pair of binoculars. Okay. Uh, some of the petroglyphs are very small. There's a couple of panels up in this area where they have hundreds of birds very small birds. So it looks like there's some over here. So let me see if I can get a zoom in. Okay, yeah, so there's the circle. Yeah, so. And to the left is a man with a spear. Yes. And then to the left of him is a man with a stick. Yes. I can see it, it's like a triangle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at that. So how old would you say these are? Uh, the majority of the petroglyphs come in waves in time. There are petroglyphs here that are thousands of years old, but there are petroglyphs that are only hundreds of years old. During the height of the uh, trading from South America, uh, there were large groups that would move north and they would, there would be sometimes 50 could be even a hundred people and they would come out and the people that would meet them it's kind of like a if you'd uh, think of it in a farmer's market they all come yeah and then they wait they may be here days waiting for them to come but the but the but the traders and then I'm not saying that they meet here but they may come and decide out of the 50 100 traders you go this way, we'll go this way, we'll cover this territory, you cover that territory. Right. But they'll stay here days, resting, recuperating, reconnaissance. There's a lot of Pueblos along here, all along this. So there's plenty of food, plenty of shelter, plenty of materials to put their stuff together. And then they would go out. So the people that were here were leaving their marks. And all these marks mean something. Right. All these marks are a message, a recording of time. We were here, we did this, <laughs> like that. I mean, you know, th these people weren't into just random graffiti. There is a, a source of 
news, a source of story, a source of drama on a lot of these petroglyphs that are out here. And out here, but I can't remember exactly where it was, but it's out here where there is, and you won't find these in any books or anything, but there is a man who is in a squat position, who has a smile on his face, and there's a long snake. So what he's doing is recording a turd. <laughs> and I have it, it's one of my favorites because the novelty of it is, is that they were not as mythical and religious as we were, as we like to believe them to be. They're as human as we are, you know? Yeah, sometimes uh, the line represents uh, a trail and the circle represents the ascension or descension close by somewhere in here if that's what it's meaning is there is a cliff there is a trail that goes up this is this is where it is mm. it's telling you that there's a trail that goes up somewhere in here now again if you have 40 50 100 uh, traders with packs on because they didn't have horses or mules or anything in those days. Um, you find a way up, you leave the marker for the next person that come up. That the makes sense. That comes up. And circles with uh, footprints in them are indications of trails. Ascension going up or descension going down. This area here isn't where the people lived. This area is where the people pass through. Now you go to the different uh, petroglyphs, the one in Santa Fe, uh, they have a lot of mythical creatures that are in that area, but that's because the people living in that area were recording shamans, visions, shamans, teachings, things like that yeah more of this spiritual journey more of a spiritual but this this place here is more of a passing passing through kind of place the color is showing the age of that petroglyph. The newer colors, the rock just above it, see all those bullet marks there? Somebody's been shooting that with a rock, with a, with a pistol. See the color, see that color? Yeah. That's new. See the color on the petroglyph down below? That's old, that's an original petroglyph. That's a parakeet. They're twin birds. See them? Yeah. They're twin birds. They're probably tied together. Oh, on wow. On the stick that they carry like that. Wow. And there's a million of those parrots, parakeets, macaws. Do you know what those ones are? Uh, the one below it has a gecko? Is that what you said? It looks like a... A gecko, the one on the right-hand side, yeah. has a long tail. Yeah. It looks like a uh, lizard, a gecko, and then the, right below the bird, it has the line with the two crosses on it. That's a dragonfly, and the one on top of it is either a roadrunner or a, it doesn't look like one of the exotic birds because their depiction of exotic birds are a little more... Uh, flamboyant because if you look at the petroglyph on top yeah see how they they go through the detail of the shape of the head the length of the tail that one on the bottom there is more like a roadrunner oh I see yeah the scoop and then it looks like an E well that E is actually a sparrow okay uh, they're common to out here, and you only see them in the afternoons and the evenings when they're out here feeding off of the bugs and the rocks and stuff. 
Um, but you'll see that symbol out here. There's, remember I was telling you that rock that had hundreds of them on there? That's yeah. what it is, one of those. Okay. And for whatever reason, they recorded all those sparrows. <laughs> <laughs> But they, uh, they show a lot of uh, eagles, sparrows, uh, robins, uh, roadrunners, and some that even look like uh, roosters, but they're not. They're roadrunners. They're New Mexico roadrunners. They're just recording them. Wow. Pretty cool. Very cool. We'll go up and uh, I'll show you the, uh, the macaw. The interesting thing is there's a lot of domestic animals dogs, pets, probably hunting dogs, companions, and there's a lot of them out here. So I've got a collection of dogs, coyotes, another collection of uh, heads and, and ceremonial masks, and another one of birds, all kinds of birds, all kinds of birds. This one here is a dog, but I can't tell what the top is. But the one that I have is a dog with two dog legs and a man with two dog legs behind the dog. Oh, I see. That's a shapeshifter. South of Albuquerque, Isleta. Isleta. They have the uh, ceremonial dancers that, that that dance the bird. The bird dance. They, they have wings. This one here has a head headdress on. And later on, someone came and added another petroglyph up on top, it makes it look like it's something else. But I think this is a Laguna or a Sleda person who for whatever reason is out here recorded that. Robert, this is the type of stuff I do all my life. I would sneak off with you guys and then when you became old enough I started taking you with me. <laughs> yeah. And we're still doing it today. Since 3,000 years later. Yeah, 3,000 years later. <laughs> so I got the guy in the back to see up there with the tail. So you got the... No, that's print. not a tail. Uh, that's an interesting thing. Uh, it's a bear's claw. Oh, okay. Um, well, what do you mean? Because like it looks like a dude and then he has something dragging behind him. It's... No, see, see it has the R and yeah, the pop. I, and then to the right. He has a he has a beak and he has the feathers. And then his head's there and you see one eye. He's looking that way. His beak, he's looking that way. His shoulders go down, he has one arm up. And I can't see the other arm, but then it, his body goes down and the right foot is a human foot, but it has a bear claw on it. Oh, okay. And the other is a foot. Okay. He's a man of the bear clan. There's another petroglyph around here. I don't know where it is. It may be on a, another one of the um, Boca Negra or Piedras Parcadas, but it has a circle and a cross. And somebody went and put an add-on to it of an arc going all the way down. The symbol of Native American is the natural symbol, which is a circle. Trees are round, teepees are round, water is round, water drops are round, everything is round. The, the natural symbol for their, their religion or their way of life is nature. And then Christianity comes in, so there's a circle and a cross. Mm. And somebody put an arc on, the, on cool. the cross. Wow. And there's the image right there. 
See that right there? Hold on. There's me, the cross. Let me. And there's the circle. And somebody added an arc on the cross. Look at that. And I've seen I've seen that image around several times where they have the cross in the circle. Do you see the bird up on the right? Yeah, that's a roadrunner. Let me find it. There it is. And he said, uh, that's a roadrunner? Yeah. Wow. Beep, beep. <laughs> yeah. Beep, beep, my ass. <laughs> This is, uh, now here's another interesting thing about this guy here. There is, um, there is a lot of petroglyphs in this area here. And if you spend any time out here looking at petroglyphs, you start seeing uh, signature marks, characters marks that tells you that that person made that one too. That one made that one too. That rock there with the natural formation of the eyes, nose, and mouth and and it's got a real light pecking or scratching of the shape of the head and if you go through and you look at several of these other natural formations of eyes nose and mouth it has the same taste the style style of that artist so that artist you can see his markings where he's made actually more and more so in that essence, or in that sense, he's creating, he's creating something wow. artistically. I was born in this, this, what we're doing here today, I was born in this. Yeah. My mom introduced us to this. We were hiking while I was still in blankets, you know, and uh, all of us spent our entire lives following my mom around like little ducks. She used to write her poetry and we'd go into the desert like this and she would read her poetry to us and we were following her. Can we go home now? I'm tired. I want to go home. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. But later on in life I found out that every one of the poetry, the, every one of the poems that she wrote was about us. She called us the wind the sage, the rock, the sand, but they were all about us. And wow. that's what we were brought up. And, and her message to us was, I'm teaching you how to dream. Oh, wow. That's, and that's what, why I'm so thrilled that you're here with me today. Oh, okay. Nice. Because I'm teaching you how to dream. I'm teaching you what I was taught. Well, I wanted to come out here because this is your element, yeah. right? This is what you, that's why we started off the walk with this being your art, mm -hmm. the premise of your art, the mm -hmm. basis. And we just gave a good explanation or demonstration of more than just two. Right. I mean, we looked at probably a dozen mm -hmm. and we didn't even film hundreds. Yeah, exactly. You know, so, and each one of them, some of them are just, I'm bored, I'm hungry and yeah. I'm going to yeah. etch exactly. something. Others yeah. are... You know, we have to wait here three days for yeah. Joe to show up, yeah. you know? Yeah, or look what I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's exactly what it is. There's no, there's nothing different in uh, the mindset today than it was 500 years ago. Wow. Human beings, human beings. Well, let's go ahead and head back and okay. get some water and stuff. Let's do that. Okay.